Hey guys, welcome to another video on my channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at what I consider to be the best Rhino build in the game currently. There's going to be a bit of a post commentary here because I did actually run a couple of games and I recorded my commentary but I messed up on all of them. Uh, the gameplay for these two uh, games that I'm going to show you uh, was actually really good and it showcased the potential of this Rhino build. But anyways, we uh, dropped in on Springfield map here. This is King of the Hill. So I started off with my fastest robot in my lineup uh, being the Strider with the Avenger and Punishers. Uh, you can see I'm trying to keep uh, these guys at bay just so that we can drain the points from this beacon. So that's why you see me dashing you know, back and forth between these barriers here, trying to buy time, enough time to drain as much points from this beacon as possible before I go down. So anyways, I got taken out there and I dropped into this Rhino build that I've been talking about. So the Rhino with the Scourge and the Spock. So I think this build is the best build for the Rhino right now. I've actually run a couple of games and surprisingly I've taken out a lot of Spectre Shock Trains with this build. Uh, even Hatchies. Uh, so very effective build uh, on the Rhino. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I was scanning the battlefield on the left side there. I did see that um, you know, their beacon on their platform was going to be activated next, which means it was either going to be the dam or the farm. So that's why you see me going in this direction. I saw that the farm is going to be next. And then I see the Spectre here. Now, you know, I'm kind of keeping tabs on his range. I see like he's under actually 500 meters, which means if he had shock trains, he could actually hit me. I wasn't hit, so I figured, you know what, maybe he has Telambus or something. He didn't hit me here at 450, so I figured... At this point, he probably has either Tyrants or Orkins, and I locked onto him, uh, took him out. I let my uh, teammate on the right side get this uh, beacon, and then I saw, you know, across the battlefield, their beacon is being highlighted. So I'm going in that direction, figuring, you know, maybe I can actually stop them from getting that beacon. Uh, then I saw this guy on the left side here in the dry river bed, kind of roasted him up with my weapons. And this is the thing, too, with this build. The uh, Scourge and the Spark have a range of up to 600 meters and what actually makes it very deadly is the closer you get, you know, to anyone who's actually running these weapons, the more damage these weapons do. So you don't want to get too close. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm uh, kind of seeing this guy here. He actually doesn't have that much health. So I figured maybe I might be able to stop him before he gets this beacon. So I'm rushing here. And then I see four guys here and I'm like thinking, okay, well, maybe this is not a good idea. So anyways, I'm attacking this one player who is within, you know, 300, 350 uh, meters. Uh, they started firing at me and I backed off because at this point, you know, I'm thinking, I don't want to engage, you know, one versus two players is not, you're not in like good odds territory. One versus four, uh, just forget about it. So that's why you see me uh, kind of retreating and trying to stop these guys from getting close to me. And, um, you know, thankfully for me, my teammates were able to uh, help me out here. Uh, this guy, I'm not sure what he's in, so you can see I'm moving back and I'm retreating in the hopes I can actually use the range of, you know, these weapons to wear them down before they get to me. And then I also see my teammates on the left side, so I'm thinking, you know what, try to get to where my teammates are so that they can help me out and I can help them out. So you see me moving in between, you know, all these uh, structures, these barriers here to create as many... Um, sort of barriers between me and the enemy. So that's kind of what I'm doing there And I see quite a few specters here. Uh, I see Tehran's. I don't see any Orkins But I'm backing off here because I don't know if one of them has Orkins and you've got to be really careful Especially when you're in a Rhino anyone who has Orkins uh, you're pretty much toast. So that's why you see me retreating back and uh, Then this one specter he actually jumped out uh, to my right side. He jumped out uh, he hit me with the uh, Tehran's, but thankfully he didn't have uh, that much health and he was missing, um, you know, a weapon. So once he got out of stealth, I made sure that, you know, I obviously took him out. And then I was trying to figure out, you know, what the specter behind this barrier had. And then I saw they actually had shock trains. He didn't see me. And, uh, you know, having my weapons that I have, you can see how quickly I melted this guy. Uh, this was bad news though. The Spectre was Scourge was burning me up, but here's the thing, I have a shield and he doesn't. So you can see I put my shield up and then I fired my spark weapons at him. So he's trying to get close, but he wasn't able to get close enough in order to burn off my shield. And that's where, you know, the Rhino really excels. 
And uh, this guy down below, I saw that he didn't have Orkins, so that's why you see me charging and I'm firing my spark weapons at him uh, to wear him down. It's going all the way through his shield. I have nothing to worry about until my shield breaks. And uh, that's pretty much, uh, you know, game number one with the Rhino, but it really uh, showcases the strength of this build and its ability to actually take out a lot of players, especially on uh, open maps. But that's kind of how I fared. I wasn't really going too much for beacons, but I just wanted to uh, showcase uh, that uh, to you guys because I thought it was a very good demonstration of uh, the Rhino with the Scourge and the Spark weapons. Anyways, game number two, we dropped in on Canyon map and this is Beacon Rush. So I started off with my Strider once again and I kind of rushed to center here and then slowed down a bit after I saw a player with an energy shield. And the reason why is because if that player had a Hechi, if I were to engage in under 300 meters, I would still have to actually wear down his energy shield first before I start doing damage to him. So that's why I'm backing off here uh, because I wasn't sure you know, what he was running and obviously the energy shield was going to be a bit of a problem. Anyways, uh, once we had kind of finished that engagement at the center and I was reloading, I kind of looked to the left side and I saw some flanks actually developing here. Um, it was going to be a bit of a problem for our Fury Dragoon and I really want to protect that Fury because on a map like Canyon, the Dragoon setup is very powerful and we may need it to disable you know, their range because Dragoons can outrange shock trains and uh, you know, who likes shock trains? So you got to make sure that you always protect, you know, the key players on your team. So what I'm doing here on the left side, I'm kind of surveying to see, you know, what do these guys uh, behind this hill here have? Uh, when I saw the one player kind of mess up his jump, I tried to attack. Uh, obviously, I got hit by shock trains here, but now this is where I actually bring out the Rhino. And, uh, you know, just like I said in the past, uh, you know, commentary there of the last game, I said the Rhino is very effective against Spectre Shock Train. So I brought up my uh, Rhino and I headed in that direction because I was going to attack uh, that Shock Train build. And obviously I'm trying to defend um, against these uh, players here on the left side who are getting closer to this Fury too. So I'm trying to uh, defend against that kind of attack. I do fall back down on this hill here as I'm reloading. And then I move to the left side once again so that I can try to see if I can maybe deal with these players uh, behind uh, this hill here. Okay, so I see the Spectre in the background there. I figured maybe he's the one with shock trains, but then I get hit by Talambus. Now I'm a little bit confused because, you know, I'm not sure, um, you know, what's going on. And being that I'm actually playing on a phone, I saw a shock train there, so I was a little bit confused as to, you know, who had the shock trains, who had the Talumbus because of, you know, obviously the splash damage and the smoke. I did wear down that player, so I knew I had taken care of one. Then I started charging this guy. And thankfully for me, he had shock trains. Now you can see why I said, you know, in the last game that the Rhino is really good and I've taken down a lot of uh, Spectre shock trains. This guy is firing his shock trains at me, but the thing is I've got a shield. Now what I'm actually doing is I'm positioning my Rhino so that I can keep the shield up and fire my spark weapons at this guy. So my whole point here is to get as close as I can to this player because this is when these weapons do a lot of damage very quickly. When he jumped up, I put up my shield, I blocked his shock trains and then eventually I took him down. Okay, so I took him down here and then, you know, just bad luck that there's an Inquisitor here and obviously <laughs> He smoked me with the Ember because obviously with the Ember it goes through physical and energy shields. But uh, you know, just the showcase of the Rhino in this game and the last game kind of shows you guys the potential of this build and how effective it can actually be at taking down certain builds in the game. So if you have a Rhino and you don't have, you know, like Spectre or Dash and stuff, sometimes it's a matter of equipping you know, your older robots with some of the newer weapons in order to deal uh, with, you know, basically what's out there, the uh, meta builds. But uh, anyways, uh, continuing with the commentary here, I did drop in with my Fury Avenger weapons. This build, I actually, I like it a lot. The only thing is, uh, you know, some of the stronger uh, weapons in the game, we're talking like Flux, Dragoon, Scourge, Shock Trains, they're either 
500 meter range or they're beyond which means they would actually outrange me uh, if you get close with this weapon though you can actually do quite a bit of damage so uh, yep yeah, I'm just kind of focusing on some of the players on the left side I actually at this point want to get out of this build so that's why you see me getting a little bit more um, aggressive I figured you know what I've uh, lost my Rhino and I'm looking at the time five minutes maybe I can make a game of this maybe I can showcase uh, some of the other robots uh, in the game and uh, or at least some of the other robots I had in my lineup I should say so that's why you see me marching towards center here uh, there is a player on my right side as well he hit me with shock trains I turn to look at him but I think he killed his bot or something yep <laughs> so he killed his bot and then I just decided to uh, charge this guy in front of me I think that was a Balkazari took him down and then uh, this player here jumped so I, I kind of backed off because I wasn't sure what he was in started firing at him and uh, you can see I was able to take him out as well okay so when I got killed there <laughs> I dropped into my mercury and I used the hell dive on this guy protected the uh, center beacon here and you know at this point the game is pretty close it's four versus two but I figured you know what with the numbers we have on our team the chances are we were probably going to win and uh, I just decided to play aggressively with uh, my mercury because I do have a mender robot uh, up next I could always use that uh, for range and I do believe at this point you know we are winding down there is one more player he looked at me and uh, he was going for me so I dragged him you know towards me so that my teammate could flank him and hit him and then when he turned his back that's when I decided to attack Okay, so he has another bot here. I'm just trying to uh, knock down that shield of his so he has no protection uh, from any kind of splash damage. And I did see that my teammate, you know, they did have splash. And this is when I decided to attack. I did the hell dive and I think that did do a bit of damage uh, to him, took him out. And I do believe that is game. So yeah, another really good game uh, showcasing the role of the Rhino in my lineup and its ability to block shock trains. So uh, this is how we stacked up. Uh, pretty decent uh, with the lineup I had. But uh, anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.